Hi there. I'm Sue Troy, Executive Editor for the IoT Institute, and I'm here at IoT World 2017 with George Lenhart, who is Senior Manager for IS Disruptive Solutions and IoT for the Hershey Company. I am. Hi, George. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. So, I have a few questions for you. Um, Please tell us about your organization, your role within it, and what it involves. So um, many people are familiar with the whole the, Her the, uh, the Hershey Company, and um, we started a new role about a year and a half ago, and that role is uh, IS Innovation and Disruptive Technologies. And the idea behind that was, would we be able to um, create a group that could take all the new emerging technologies and find if it was a good fit, leverage it, create an ROI, and make some more money for the Hershey Company. Why does a company like Hershey need IoT? How does it benefit your business model? Well, you know, the, uh, it's funny, the, uh, Hershey's been manufacturing for 100 years, over 100 years, and, and many of the things that we do, we have perfected, you know, and we've got great Six Sigma teams, and they've really perfected the process of making the candies that we make. And, and to try to find something that could make a, a jump in productivity, Really, until the IoT came along, until we found that emerging uh, technology, you know, it was kind of a status quo. I mean, we're good, we're really good at doing this, and we were getting small incremental changes along the way. It was when we saw it, and we applied it for the first time, and we built a prototype, that we realized um, this was going to be a game changer. We could literally make a jump in what we were doing. Talk us through how Hershey has used data and AI to revolutionize how Twizzlers are made. Sure. Um, and uh, what, what's the end goal for that technology? So, so we ran a pilot um, in the making and the extrusion of Twizzlers, which is the licorice. And um, we, we knew that that system had been pretty well perfected, but we also knew that it was made in batches. And we knew that inherently, the fact that you make a batch and it starts out at one temperature and it just continues to lose temperature and then goes back and you add another batch on top and then we knew this variability. We had done as much as we could to hammer that out to be as, as straight on as possible. We knew that if we could predict what the weight was going to be, we could actually proactively essentially adjust the machine knowing that, hey, it's going to go a little light so uh, turn the uh, turn the extruder on a little harder, or it's going to go a little heavy and throttle back. And we thought it would work. We weren't sure it would work, but uh, we, so we went ahead and we built out a prototype. And then we actually went to the line and and outfitted it with. Uh, we actually only had to add one additional sensor, and then um, we ran some analytics. Took us a couple months. Uh, we we had to get it nice and secure. That took a couple more months. But then um, we actually did turn it on, and we were able to allow the uh, Azure, the machine learning, to actually control the extruder mm -hmm. and prescribe to it exactly where it should be, how fast should it be extruding based on all of the IoTA data upstream of that point. Mm -hmm. And it was a success. Mm -hmm. But you ran into some difficulty getting approval for this project. I've heard that it was, you got turned down about four times. We did, we did. So I share that um, because it's, it's, it's important to share because I, I talk to a lot of companies and I get asked, well, how did you ever get the project approved? So it, I, want, I don't want people to think that it was easy to get it approved. Mm -hmm. the, it was hard to visualize allowing the cloud to actually control an extruder. Mm -hmm. So um, the first couple times I asked, I, I, I may not have done enough homework until I actually built a prototype and showed this is what I was going to do and I mocked it up. Mm -hmm. And then, then everyone was very comfortable and we went forward. Mm -hmm. But it took, a few, it took a few passes to get to that point. Yeah. So there are a whole bunch of other emerging technologies covered at this year's event that are um, pretty cool, like blockchain, augmented reality, virtual reality, bots. Mm -hmm. Are you guys at Hershey's using those for anything? So, so we are using the HoloLens. So we, we did get three of them. And the very first application we had is um, two of the engineers, which is great that we have IT and engineering at this event together. Two of the engineers, are, their job is to come up with new production lines and what they look like and do they fit in the existing space. And we've already set up for the first time uh, HoloLens, set up some CAD drawings, and they, they were able to walk through new production lines for Hershey even before we built them. So, so we really see some value to the whole uh, HoloLens, see what I see, hear what I hear type of technology. And, and how is that going to benefit the business well, using HoloLens? As you try to fit equipment into plants, you know, yeah. if you can actually see a 3D rendering of a production line mm -hmm. in the space that it's going to be, 
and you can predict is it too high, is it too low, there's something in the way. The value is a lot because we'll know before we start trying to get equipment there and start bolting it together, we'll have already walked past it and we'll already see it. So we definitely see some value to that. Yeah. Okay, so thank you, George. This has been really interesting. Um, well, thank you. Thanks for coming to IoT World 2017. Thanks for having me.